One other random tidbit. There is a hose that mounts right here on the top of the timing belt cover. So I went ahead and took off uh, two bolts that hold that bracket in place. And then there's a hose that goes to each valve cover. So go ahead and disconnect that so you can get to the cover bolts. I gotta say, probably the most tedious and difficult part was all the wire harness connectors and not breaking the plastic. But there are a lot of connections on this valve cover. So definitely make sure that you tape them, label them. I used paint pin on some of them. And I also took my phone and recorded videos with me narrating exactly which connection went where. So that way I should be able to put it back together when it's all said and done. To get to the passenger side camshaft, you're gonna to have to take off the heater core hoses, which are the two hoses here that go down behind that engine block. It is a little bit difficult with not a whole lot of space to work, but this will give you the access that you need. All right, we got the tiny belt getting ready to go in. We got the driver's side marked. There is a little punch mark on the actual sprocket, and I just take a paint pen over it. The passenger side has a P and some other splotches. There's excess ink coming off, but you can see how that one's time. And the crankshaft sprocket, I've just got it marked on the top end because I didn't want to crawl up underneath the vehicle. All right, you can see on the tensioner that it looks like the Allen key is not quite vertical. So maybe right around 1130. That's where I want to tension the pulley. So I've already replaced the water pump and there's basically six bolts that hold it in, three along the top, and then there's kind of three along the bottom here. Some of the bolts that hold the lower timing belt cover on actually go through a couple of the holes on the uh, water pump there. So you only have six main bolts holding it in and the torque is 12 to 15 foot pounds. And I will say that this uh, torque wrench that I got off Amazon is actually really good. The uh, tactile feedback on it for a clicker wrench is actually very distinct. So you clearly know when you've gotten the torque. So the camshaft backer plate on the passenger side cylinder head is actually behind this copper looking bracket right here. So this is actually just a bracket that has some clips for some wire harnesses and it looks like a sensor or a relay or something can clip onto there. And it just has a couple 10 millimeter nuts and then one 10 millimeter bolt that you can take out. Driver side valve cover, took off this bracket here. This has a little EVAP type uh, valve that looks like on top of the air conditioning compressor. This goes to the bottom of something on the intake manifold plenum. A little short jumper on the side goes to the first bracket and that comes out on the back side of the plenum. This little hose on the right side of that valve goes to the right hose and this comes back to the air box connection. So that's the hose connections. I'm going to fold this out of the way and I should be able to get at the valve covers. Driver side valve cover removed. You can see the rocker arm shaft has a larger cutout that is facing the middle of the engine. The exhaust valve rocker arm has a very small cutout. And that's how I need to make sure that the rocker arms get back. So the rocker arms are out of the driver side cylinder head. This is just like they were at the junkyard on the Z31, but just as a heads up, whenever you take these off, you don't want them to be under spring tension. So I actually kept the timing belt on, rotated the engine until all the rocker arms were basically sitting flat, meaning that the springs were not depressed any. And that's when I decided to go ahead and take these off. Now you don't want to take one bolt all the way out. You want to do maybe a half turn on one end and kind of work your way in. There's a specific sequence in the factory service manual, but you don't want one end to be loose and have the spring pushing it up while the other side is restrained. So you want to easily walk them off. The next step is to remove the lifters. Now I'm going to be replacing the hydraulic lifters, but just for good measure, I went ahead and took a nice egg carton here and I labeled it similarly because I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of oil in here and I'm just going to keep the old lifters just in case for whatever reason the new cams don't fit up. You want to make sure the lifters go back to the same cam lobe that they originally broke in on. A quick note on the distributor. 
it meshes with this gear onto the gear that is on the actual camshaft. You got to slide it in there gently to make sure the gears are meshing. But there's also an adjustment that you can make as far as clocking the timing. But also this is what they call the rotor. This is spinning and this sends the ignition signal. I put a paint pin mark right over here and I got to make sure that when it's all said and done at this specific engine spot that the rotor is timed appropriately. A little bit of trickiness with the distributor but it's not too bad. There's only one bolt holding it in and then you can just kind of gently twist it out to unmesh the gears with the camshaft. Now all I got to do I've already got the oil seal out, so I just got to get to the bolt on the bolt. Alright guys, every job has to have that one part that completely derails your entire progress. And for me, that was the rear bolt on this camshaft here. So I was able to get, you know, a little stubby breaker bar like this onto the back of the cylinder head, and I was able to get onto the bolt there. But the torque on that bolt was a lot tighter than the one that I had to deal with at the junkyard. So I spent a lot of time trying to think of different ways and different wrenches that I could get back there. I tried the swivel ratchet, but I just wasn't able to get enough torque. Eventually, I just used this stubby breaker bar and I went out and bought a 30 inch long piece of steel pipe. And that was actually enough to get the torque that I needed to break it free. It took me about five minutes once I added the breaker bar on top of the breaker bar there. So this should be pretty easy and this is the stock camshaft coming out now. And now we're in business. So if you want to try and take on a job like this on your own, it's definitely something that you need to plan for multiple days down without your truck. And you need to have a lot of garage space. It's difficult to stay organized, but you can see even with my several workbenches here, between new parts ready to go in, old parts that I've taken off that still need to go back in, and now my camshaft assembly station here. I am running out of space even with my best attempts to try and stay organized. So first things first, I'm just going to take out the new camshaft and I'm going to lay it side by side to the stock camshaft. Alright, so despite the mess here, I'm going to try and lay out a trash bag to keep uh, all the dirt and contamination around the work area relatively clean on the camshaft. I'm just going to spray it with some degreaser type stuff, and I'm just going to wipe it down just to make sure there's no dust or particulates that may have gathered on it since it's been sitting. So now I'm going to take the Schneider Racing Cams Cam Lube, and this is a grease-like paste. I'm going to go ahead and rub a bunch of this right on the cam lifters, on the, on the lobes here. I'm going to also put the lube on the distributor gear and on the bearing surfaces, assuming that I have enough. That is the new cam, loosely installed with all of the assembly lube, and it's roughly bolted up right now. I need to check the in float and make sure that it's not too tight and not going to bind in the cylinder head. So a quick note on actually torquing this rear bolt in the back of the cylinder head. And I should have explained this earlier, but this was before I had reassembled all of the valve train here. There's no space to get a full-on torque wrench back here. So I used the breaker bar, and I just used it to hold the back bolt. And this was when I didn't have any of the valve train in place, so the only thing preventing the camshaft from spinning in place was this wrench. And it just so happens to be that the cam sprocket bolt has a torque call out of 55 to 68 foot pounds. So I used the torque wrench on the front cam sprocket and tightened it to that 68 foot pound mark. And since the only thing holding the camshaft from spinning was the back bolt here and this back wrench, that ensured that both bolts were torqued to that same specification. Now, I still had to remove the cam sprocket to put the back backer plate on behind the cam sprockets and some other things. So to remove the cam sprocket, I just used the flats in the actual camshaft to kind of hold it and I used an impact wrench to pop this loose real quick and that way it didn't mess with the torque on the back. Yes. <laughs> 
Is that boring again? It's like, hey, what's left to do? Everything. Yeah, yeah now everything. We now just put everything back together. Alright man, get out of here in a few minutes. So hopefully this thing drives a little better on the highway for you. I'm hoping so. Or, you know, at least uh if nothing else, just the fact that I can say I you know, I did something cool. What'd you do? Uh, a lot of work that got me basically nowhere. But yeah, I did it. But it was fun. Right. Well, for like, for like a day or so. I was going to say, uh, yeah, I made it like a day into this project before I was like, why the hell did I do this? It was right around the point where like, I was basically at the point where I was like, if all I was doing was the timing belt, I would be done. But no, I decided to do cams, so I'm doing all this extra work now. So I'm reassembling the passenger side rocker arm assembly right now. And just as a quick overview of how this all went down, when you line up your normal timing marks, and I've got lots of paint pen marks here, and they mean something to me, but it's going to be a little bit difficult to explain. But it's just something you need to keep track of. When you mark it based on the actual timing marks for putting the timing belt on, that gives you number one cylinder at top dead center on compression stroke. At that point, the rocker arm on the driver's side, all those rocker arms will be mostly free, meaning the valve and the spring is not compressed at all. That's when you can go ahead and take off the rocker arm assembly and your lifters. So after I installed the cam on the driver's side, I put the cam sprocket back on. I loosely reinstalled the old timing belt so I could keep the engine in time because you want to keep both cam shafts and the crankshaft in time. And then I rotated the engine using a breaker bar and just a socket based on the crankshaft. And then what I did is I watched the rocker arms here and I found the spot where the lifters were not sticking out, meaning that the valves were not being compressed. And that's when I knew it was okay to go ahead and remove the bolts over here. So I already have the new camshaft in and I'm just retorquing to 16 foot pounds. And it's always good form to tighten them a little bit at a time. But as I work these bolts in, little by little, I noticed that there was no binding and you can see that the valve spring is not really being compressed at all. You wanna make sure that the torque actually goes into holding the rocker arm assembly down to the base and not just going into trying to compress this spring. Sixteen foot pounds. All right, so now both Schneider racing cams are totally installed in the cylinder heads. The valve train is back together and properly torqued. I'm still going to have to rotate the engine over a couple times just using a breaker bar on the crankshaft. And I just want to watch the valve train motion just to make sure that there's no signs of the springs totally uh, compressing. There shouldn't be that much valve lift in them, but just to double check and just to make sure that everything rotates through smoothly. But I'm not going to go into every bit of detail on the reassembly. If you've made it this far, I assume that you have an idea as to what you're doing. But wanted to give everybody out there some visibility as far as Schneider Racing Cams, what type of option that is, and how that install is on a VG33 Nissan Xterra. Specifically, if you're already doing a timing belt type of job, how much extra effort is it to put the cams in? And on top of that, not pulling the engine and not pulling the cylinder heads, is it possible? I will say I had plenty of room underneath the front radiator support, but I also had the body lift, so that gives me another extra two inches of clearance there. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for following on my YouTube updates, and leave in the comments what you think. I'll include some more updates in the future about the actual performance once I get this broken in, but right now I still got a lot of reassembly to do.